Good evening, Robert Scribbler. It is May 13th, 2019. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I am going to focus on Greenland, in particular Greenland's surface melt for the present year or 2019. And as you can see from this graph provided by the National Snow and Ice Data Center, which is the national authority on snow and ice in primarily the northern hemisphere, focusing on Greenland and on sea ice, but also providing top-notch research on the issue of Antarctic sea ice extent and to include more recently Arctic glacial melt, which, which is becoming more and more of a major factor as the Earth system warms, primarily due to fossil fuel burning. Now, going back to Greenland, at present for the year of 2019, we have seen a relatively major spike in Greenland's surface melt during late April and early May. And as you can see in this graph here, the surface melt loss extended into a spike ranging to about 7% of the surface area of the Greenland ice sheet. And this is a, a pretty big spike for this time of year. It's not the largest spike that we've seen, but it is likely the longest consistent period of melt that we have seen so early. And this long consistent period of melt has been driven by a period of much warmer than normal temperatures across the surface of Greenland starting in early to mid-April and extending on into the middle of May. Now at present, surface temperatures in Greenland have backed off a little bit. Uh, we, are, we are still seeing warmer than normal conditions over the surface of Greenland, but not a, a considerable spike comparable to what we have seen during recent weeks. Now, as we get into summer, we will tend to see temperatures continue to warm up over the surface of Greenland. And there may be some concern that we will see uh, continued melt, uh, continued above average melt for the season, the season of late spring and running into early summer. But the trends that we are seeing right now are, are not indicating, at least over the next 10 days, that we're going to see a major melt spike occurring at least through May 22nd or later. Now we do get a, a bit of a uh, temperature spike in the middle portion of this global forecast system monitor. But there, there's a mix of, of ridging and low pressure and, and trough development over Greenland, which will tend to tamp down any surface melt that does occur. That said, if, if, we, if we get to see a high amplitude jet stream wave and a reassertion of the kind of ridge pattern that we saw over the past month that produced this spike, watch out, we could be in for some rather extreme melt early on in the melt season during late May and early June. But we don't yet have an indicator that the pattern, that, that kind of pattern will tend to exert, assert. However, we have seen some strong ridging across the Northern Hemisphere during recent weeks. And if one of these ridges does extend over Greenland, then we are likely to see a, a continued assertion of, of much normal, much, much more surface melt than would be typical at this time of year. So I just want to go ahead and provide a comparison with past melt years. I, I know we're early on in the melt season for Greenland, but looking at the record melt year 
of 2012, we saw large melt spikes in early April and, and a, a relatively smaller melt spike, but still a significant melt, melt spike running in from April and into May of 2012, but becoming much more significant as we got into late May and early June. I also like to point out that 2017 saw strong early season melt. I'll try and uh, zoom in on this graphic here for you. Let's see. I'll Yeah, for some reason, it's not not wanting to show a larger graphic. But so what we saw in 2017 were rather significant melt sp spikes in late April and May. But as we got into June, a trough pattern tended to assert over Greenland, and we saw a suppression of early to mid-season melt, followed by a late-season melt, melt spike as ridging and warm air flooded into Greenland. So just because you have strong early season melt doesn't mean that you're going to have a, a trend toward stronger mid to late season melt. So, so just because we're seeing a significant early season melt for, for Greenland doesn't mean that that, that trend will continue. So, so it's a bit of a concerning indicator, but it's something that that we want to keep an eye on. It, it doesn't necessarily mean that 2019 will, will be a significant above average melt here. Now, the reason why surface melt is very important for Greenland is the science shows us that 60% of, of mass loss from Greenland comes from surface melt. And the remaining 40% for Greenland is attributed to ice flowing out into the ocean. So, so a large portion of, of the mass loss for Greenland comes from ice flowing from glaciers into the ocean directly, but, but a larger portion comes from surface melt and surface melt water flowing into the ocean due to that melt, due to, due to the seasonal melt that we tend to see primarily during summer. So for Greenland, surface melt is, is a rather big deal. Now, I just like to also put into context the melt that, that we are seeing from Greenland and note that even in summers where melt seems to be less, we're, we're still having significant mass loss. So, so we're still having year-on-year -year mass loss from Greenland. Uh, uh, some people like to cherry-pick 2012 and, and say that, well, if melt isn't as bad as it was in 2012, then, then we're not seeing mass loss from Greenland. That's just not true. We, we've seen a consistent trend of mass loss and, and what appears to be an accelerated trend of mass loss from Greenland since the 1990s with a, with a strong trend of mass loss from the early 2000s. We've lost 4,000 billion tons of ice from Greenland since the early 2000s. A, 1 billion tons of, of ice is, is about a cubic kilometer, so, so basically a mountain. We've, we've lost about 4,000 mountains of ice from Greenland since the early 2000s. So it's a very significant loss. And as you can see, indicated by the black line in this graphic here. Now, the yellow-orange line indicates the global mean sea level change since 1993. And as you can see, the oceans are rising in conjunction with the mass loss that we are seeing from Greenland. The primary contributors to sea level rise are melting land ice sheets from places like Greenland and Antarctica and from other glaciers around the world, and also due to the thermal expansion of the ocean as the ocean warms. Now, the blue line here shows the cumulative melt anomaly 
versus the 1961 to 1990 mean. And as you can see, Greenland has melted considerably since that time. This graphic provided and information provided by the nature study, the study published in Nature entitled Hydrology and the Future of the Greenland Ice Sheet. So, so the context is that Greenland is losing ice, it's losing mass, and, and that surface melt is the primary contributor of two major contributors for Greenland mass loss, the other contributor being ice flowing out into the ocean. So in conclusion, and, and to, to put a, a bit of a finer point on the, the second aspect of mass loss, which is ice flowing into the ocean, I'd just like to show you this satellite shot from NASA Worldview of the Jakobshavn Glacier region, which at present, as of May 12th, shows a good amount of ice flowing out through the Jakobshavn ice channel and into Baffin Bay. And, and Jakobshavn is one of the fastest moving glaciers on Earth, uh, the, 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 fa the fastest moving glacier on Greenland, and one of the major contributors for Greenland ice mass loss through, through the loss of, of glaciers sliding into the ocean. I'm just going to go ahead and reverse and advance this frame because you can you can see the ice moving over the past four days, running out through this channel and into Baffin Bay with a, a large progression of icebergs running out in through Baffin Bay. Now, human forced climate change is driving mass loss and from major glaciers and driving a propagation of icebergs into the North Atlantic through Baffin Bay. And we are seeing this in real time. And, and this is an aspect of human-caused climate change. But I just also like to note that, sorry, having a little bit of cat trouble here. I also like to note that the primary source at present for Greenland mass loss is surface melt, which is in many ways driven by summer temperatures, which have recently been spiked by human forced climate change. So thank you for joining me and I'll be chatting with you soon.